Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Thank you. Here, pick up that one, Johan. Yeah, we haven't ice Hold this open if you could get it. Can you hold it? Is that the drink? Yeah. Good afternoon. Hi there. Hi. Hi. since the DEQ had help in making them, we'd bring you your share. Well, let me introduce you to Joni Hammond. She's our interim director of DEQ. Hi, Joni. Thank you so much for coming. We appreciate you coming here, and it shows the concern and how worried you are. This is a, another example of how concerned you are and your families. Um, we appreciate your conversation. We're going to work hard with the additional resources that we received with your support and the governor's support to continue to get additional data and monitoring to provide answers to you. Joni, can you tell me, are you going to release all of the uh, material safety data sheets from McClure Industries, Precision Cast Cards, Ouroboros glass and bullseye glass to us? I am, we're going to continue to follow the plan that we have outlined as far as addressing air toxics. And if that's a part of it, then we will do that. How about the users of hexavalent chromium within Portland? We're continuing to follow the plan as we've outlined. We're continuing to work on what that plan entails. And if that's a part of that, we will do that as well. So I think I understand you saying that though Dick Peterson has left, his plan is still in place? We have um, a general plan of what we're going to be doing. And we have um, identified some people. And as you know, the important part is to continue to work on our soil and our air monitoring. What do you answer when you see the reports coming out that the DEQ has known for years that these toxins or toxics are in the air? I'm, I understand that we haven't been as, as timely as you would like. I'm also, but we're talking about decades. I'm also happy and, um, Happy that we have the Forest Service data and the MOSS data that would provide us more information than when we didn't have it. And we're going to, that'll allow us to know where to put the monitors in so we can provide more information. To As all I understand, of you. the $2.5 million only allows for one or two more monitors. As you know, we're working on a monitoring plan to be able to decide and prioritize where we're going to put. Air toxics in Portland, of course, is very important. There are other areas that have air toxics as well. So agency-wide, we're going to develop a plan and decide what we're going to monitor where, when it's time to move that monitor to a different place, and what the data says, and work with our partners at the Forest Service and the Health Department to deliver that to all of you. How are you going to involve the public in this plan? As you know, we're a very public agency, and we want to work and continue to talk with groups of people such as yourselves. And we also will provide information as we get it. We um, also, it's important that all of our data is quality controlled, and so sometimes it's not as quick as all of us would like it, but it's more important to be accurate than quick. Can you answer why it, it, we feel it's simple to stop the polluters and ask them to put on emission controls and then they can begin their productions again? Can you tell me why that wouldn't be a, a plan that you would support? As you know, we're having um, conversations with some of the facilities 
and that we're going to start rulemaking in March that will address a health and a risk base. What do we do in the meantime, the people who are living in a neighborhood? I mean, Bullseye today is still manufacturing glass. And so we have no knowledge of what what is in the air and they've stopped three of them but we don't know what else is being spewed out and as i understand it deq has the authority to immediately stop all emissions if it poses a public health issue which it does and so i don't understand why you're not exercising your authority to do so as you know um they have voluntarily stopped using three of the toxics but there so are the second identified toxics <clears throat> And we're continuing to have conversations with the facilities on how they're going to go forward. I, would, I, have, a, I have a question. Um, so uh, much of our congressional delegation, Senators Wyden, uh, Merkley, and Representative Blumenauer, have called this a public health emergency. Do you agree that it's a public health emergency? I agree that it's time that we continue to monitor with our soils and our Do you air. agree that it's a public health emergency? Yes, sir. I agree that it's time for we, us to continue to monitor in those areas. So that's that going to be shows. interpreted as that's a no. no. That's a no. Yeah, so that's a no. unless you want to clarify your statement, we'll take that forward well, to no. As you know, as you know, pub, that is a public health authority's decision, not DEQ's. As a Portland resident, do you believe that we are in a public health crisis? The data is going to show whether there are public health and you're threats comfortable or breathing not. This air? Well, Until did, then? Did, did, wouldn't you agree that it was called a public health emergency by our congressman because of the environmental toxins that your agency is charged with regulating? I, I um, Would, Did they call it a public health emergency because of air toxins? I don't know what specifically they used to make that declaration. However, in Oregon, we rely on our public health partners to make that kind of declaration. Obviously, it's very important to us or we wouldn't be putting the additional monitoring in and providing soils and air information for you. I think the problem is that public health is, is so completely tied to environmental health because we're constantly breathing in the air. And we're now people in this neighborhood are peeing out cadmium because you've been permitting this use of cadmium for years and years and years, not letting anyone know they're actually breathing it in. So I think for you to sit here and say that it's time to monitor and it's not time to take action is pretty offensive mm -hmm. to these people. Yes. Agreed. Agreed. Yes. Agreed. Will DEQ be calling for a special session of the legislature? I don't have the ability to do that. I think monitoring Would you is taking for that? action. I think monitoring is taking action. I think adding more resources to DEQ to continue to provide data to what all of you. What do we do you? in the meantime while we're still breathing this? I think, as you know, we partner with the public health. Do we not plant a garden this year? That's something that we'll need to work <clears> with public health on, whether you should do that or not. Well, they've already told us not to. Right. And I'm worried you like to hold I'm still skewing out. They've confirmed with me face-to-face um, -face they use lead, cobalt, manganese, nickel, and existing processes. They use lead every single day in their furnaces. They say it's integral to the glass making process. I live four blocks away, and I don't feel comfortable gardening until I know that they're not putting stuff out into the neighborhood. We know that there's a list of 175 toxics used in glass making, identified by the National Institute of Health. We have no idea what Bullseye's plans are stacked. Not only that, but when DEQ requested a list of the materials used by Bullseye, you only requested a list for the week of February 8th. And we know that their production cycle changes throughout the year because what makes the pretty colors in their glass is toxic materials. So we have no idea what they're putting in their furnaces week to week, and it doesn't look like you do either. We're continuing to have conversations with the facilities. I'm going to have to step in for a minute. We really appreciate you being here. This is wonderful to have your intelligence and your passion. And I think for now, we're going to have to let the current new interim director get back to doing some work right now. This is not to blow you off at any stretch of the imagination. We weren't prepared, per se, for any kind of a press conference. And um, this is real time. This is happening now. This it is, it is, and like so is our much, work, sir. It really sounds just like you're more concerned with business as usual than protecting the population. That's not at all the case. But I'm going to continue like this interview here. right now. Is Thank DEQ you. willing to meet with this group on a weekly basis, on a regular basis? I'll be back to talk to you. You guys that. should know that this has know. done absolutely nothing to restore the public's trust in the DEQ. The interim director of the DEQ, based on this, 
meeting has absolutely no power and is not willing to act. That's a fact. What should neighbors do with their Thank vegetables that are toxic? Thank you for coming. Please follow the advice that you've been given repeatedly in the public about what do the we gardening do with, information. What do we do with the, they said don't garden. What do we do with the vegetables that we have already harvested from this winter? Or I'm sorry, I'm not prepared to answer that question. Thank you again for being here. I must get back to work. Thank you. Thank Are you, you willing to meet much. with us weekly, DEQ? Will you meet with us? Is it a public building? Can we walk in? I cannot believe that that's the rest of the DEQ. That is yeah. incredible. She is, is She's worse than Nick really Patterson. So oh. That is so disappointing. She has all the power and none of the willingness to act. She doesn't even have the willingness to make a statement. She doesn't even have the willingness she to agree even know what with our senators. Senators. As you know. <laughs> That was horrible. As you know, she is a disaster. Yeah. They didn't address the concerns in the letter. No. I am, that was like embarrassing. Yeah. I'm embarrassed for her. Well, anyway, I'm glad we were sad. here with a ton of cameras. I'm sad. sad. I'm sad. sad as if it's a crazy jacket. Unbelievable. Yeah, she does. It's better. Just the other two. The other two. All right. All right. Carl. Jody, Jody, why Blyly, B-L-E-Y-L-E. What's your, what's your reaction? I'm really shocked that that was the interim director of the DEQ. She has all the authority of the DEQ behind her, which we know is enormous, and she is not willing to take any of that authority. She didn't, she didn't display any power, any leadership. She, I assumed she was like a low level mid manager. When she first came out. I am really, really disappointed and sad, disheartened. The people of Oregon are not in good shape. These are the people who are responsible for 150 times the level of arsenic, 49 times the safe level of cadmium. These people are responsible for toxic metals being spewed in the air. How, how worried does that make you? I am terrified. Most of my friends live within a half mile of Bullseye. I have two friends who own houses across the street from the smokestacks, but it affects the air for every citizen of Oregon. We have taken a step backwards now by having this, this new interim director of the DEQ, and I, I think that Governor Kate Brown needs to call a special session immediately. Thank you. No, no, I, I appreciate you guys. It affects It really smells in there. What smells like manganese? What smells like cobalt? I was right behind him in the elevator. Wow, that's it. Okay, still good. Check, check, one, two, good, good. Yep, spell the J E S S I C A A P P L E G A T E. What's your reaction? Um, I am just appalled. I, I'm really worried this did nothing to restore our faith in the DEQ. In fact, it brought out even more questions. I don't feel like one side knows what the other side is doing. It's just, it's appalling. You feel like this is an incompetent agency? Yes, I do. And I'm, I, I don't want to personalize any of it because I think that we need to all be nice to each other as humans. But yes, the agency as a whole is very incompetent. And I wonder about the Environmental Quality Commission that actually directs these people to do the things they do. And people haven't really talked about that yet, but there are five um, governor appointees to that commission and we kind of need to take them to task as well. And last question, 150, or 150 times the accepted safe level of arsenic and, and 50 times the accepted safe level of cadmium. These are the people that can stop that. Exactly. And, and they it can exercise their it. regulatory <laughs> authority. They have the authority under the Oregon administrative rules to immediately shut down any facility that is posing a public health risk. And if this isn't, I don't know what is. Are you surprised that there is toxic air being spewed right now? And, right now. And the government agency that could stop it? They are as, not. As you know. We're I don't there. understand. I just don't understand why they can't have them stop put the filters on and this can all be over. It's it's unbelievable to me. Precision cast parts made a nice move a couple days ago preemptively 
installing filtration systems. I think they saw this type of thing coming and it just amazes me that bullseye is continuing to be belligerent. Are you worried that precision cast parts has to do their own filtering and and bullseye decided on their own to stop using these things when, when this government agency could have said, no, you can't use them. People are volunteering to stop spewing instead right. of the agency right. who's supposed to regulate them. Right, and we're hoping that someday we do have an agency that can regulate them, that we can trust again. But in the meantime, we're expecting our business partners in our community to do the right thing for all of us. Thank you. Good questions. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Mm. It doesn't seem odd. It's not. That seems really strange. And it's that we even ask Bullseye, we just do the right thing. What's what's the problem? You have nineteen point eight million well, dollars in yearly sales. To see again. Yeah, how are you doing? And they only agreed to stop using one permanent. My neighbor was inside their house was on the on the Exactly. This is what this sign is all about right here. This is the crux of the matter. This is what's wrong. This is what needs to happen. That's it. Super simple. It is super simple. I don't know how they're getting away with this. And you know, it's one thing for, I'm glad that they're stepping forward to, to put emission controls on, but it, it's at their own, we have to, we have to trust that they're doing the right thing. There's no government oversight over what they do. How many days can we really assemble like a big mob of neighbors to be outside right. the factory doors? Right. Like, that should not be the way that we get. I mean, that's a great feeling, but that should not be how we get protected. Exactly. Well, you know what, though, is our tax money doesn't pay for this. They get funded from polluter fees, and that's part of the problem. And so that's why we see when um, Bullseye had the opportunity to go lobby the EPA for the very loophole that allowed them to emit the pollutants that they emit. It was a DEQ employee who gave them the heads up, hey, yo, you might want to go talk to the EPA. They're about to regulate you. And they call us, the neighbors. Right, because they don't get paid on for violations. Uh -huh. They get paid from the industry, but not for the violations. Right. <laughs> wow. It's amazing. Good job, everybody. All right. Good job Thank to you. you. Thank you, media. Thank you, media. Yeah. We really yeah. appreciate yeah. it. when we don't have a real newspaper anymore. Unless you turn on us and then we make it. We have the Mercury, that's our real newspaper. <laughs> the cutest thing about this so far for me is that I want my kids to be like a journalist now. I know my 16 year old daughter writes for the Cleveland High School paper. Mm. It's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. there. Okay, so. Hi, use that name email. Get out of the beam. Yeah, I'd love to get together. And there's some other things.